Okay, so this is the first uh, video on the Lordy Fan Nation uh, YouTube page. Uh, it's gonna be a discussion here. I am uh, Marcus, better known around the interwebs as Lordy Funny, and I am joined here by two other Lordy fans who can now introduce themselves to the good listeners. Well, as um, most of the listeners should be aware, I am Nightmare Wings Hell, aka the moderator of the forum. Um, uh, I'm uh, Catford, yeah, uh, kind of new noob or something on the forum, but uh, yeah. Okay, so introduction's done, so what are we going to be discussing today? Okay, well, the discussion will be about uh, Lordy's next album and next era. Uh, fitting subject since Mr. Lordy has just recently updated that he's doing demos for the next album and the first steps towards the next era are already taken. So just discussion of what we we three think the next album is going to be, what the next era is going to be and what we would personally like it to be and maybe some speculation on that. Well, I'm gonna start off uh, saying that I'm gonna I'm I'm a little wary uh, due to the fact that since Lordy are gonna be celebrating their 10th year anniversary as an actual existing band, not a concept anymore, um, we are prone to see the release of Scar Chive sometime soon. And I was wondering if Lordy were gonna do something special for their 10 year anniversary, or just you know do release a DVD of that and go out and do a do a tour for that but it seems that you know they're just going to release a dvd release some stuff forget about that not do any special 10th anniversary shows and just go hit it right up to the uh the recording of the album well yeah i i don't know we we might get something later on i mean it's only january but uh still but i mean i i don't know if it's just the lordy fanatic in me talking but uh, i personally i'm just fucking hyped because one scar cuts, just the idea that we're gonna get some rare stuff now is just wonderful. And uh, mi there was actually an article about Miss about Lordy yesterday in some Finnish paper. They interviewed Mr. Lordy about this shit, and uh, I I didn't read it, but uh, the fans who did apparently Mr. Lordy said there that apparently now it's true that. Bend over and pray the Lord is gonna be released during the spring. I was ready to fucking cry when I read that. It's just... D didn't he say that he was never gonna release that? That he's only gonna release that when he's old and senile? Yes, he did, but... <laughs> when you think about all the stuff that he said that he w wouldn't do and... He's done, so... I'm glad that this is one of the things that he compromised on, because good lord, I, I can't wait to hear that. Maybe he's giving up. Maybe this is the end of Lordy. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little pessimistic, <laughs> really, because well, the last year the catastrophic results of uh, his huge promises. I'm a little worried about this new one. Well, I think we've all learned uh, never to say never with Lordy, and I just find it ironic that. Mr. Lordy was fighting back the whole notion of, oh no, we're never gonna release this or this, but apparently it's still gonna get released. I'm interested to hear, for one, I'm one of the people who liked the idea of the song style of Inferno, a kind of sort of industrial, white zombie style band almost, and I really liked it, I thought that was a really cool idea. But again, I know a lot of people don't like it, but like I said, I'm game for that. I'm game for an earlier sound, something raw, even if it's a drum machine, you know, I still want to hear it. Yeah, exactly. For me, it's maybe it's not gonna be the same great Lordy that we know now, but still, just it's gonna be interesting to hear what kind of band Lordy was back then. You know, just I to mean, hear, hear the concepts. You know, it's like maybe we can find out, you know, or point out differences, or say, oh, you know, this is what you know, this song became this, or this song became that. I can hear a groove from you know this song and this song, and you know, ideas like that. Well, yeah, Mr. Lordy released the. Uh, the song list like a couple of years ago and apparently Get Heavy is on the album so that's already from the 90s so we're gonna hear another like earlier version of it. I, I'm Get sure the heavy. mixing's gonna be a lot better than whatever it was on the actual release of Get Heavy. I, I've stated time and time again I hate the mixing on that album because it sounds <laughs> so compressed and so so lifeless but again I'm I'm like I said in every review I've had it's always crunchy you know crunchy guitars I need that you know 
that 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 fuels me essentially. Yeah, well, Mr. Lordy did have some radio interview like last year, and he, as a special little surprise, he played uh, Almost Human, the Kiss cover, which is on Bend Over and Pray the Lord. He played that on the radio show. It it wasn't mastered yet, so the sound quality was whatever. But I mean, if there if I can guess anything from that Kiss cover, I'm, I'm thinking that it's gonna sound fucking amazing. It sounded really interesting. And uh, additional, uh, orders is new. Um, well, I'm not going to say that uh, Kino was a bad drummer, but it's clear that Orders is from a different genre of music. Now, I think it will be interesting to see what he can con- contribute for, like, for the, his first album in the band, because we haven't seen that much of him and how much he can do yet, because he has to just adopt things like old stuff. Well, I, I, I agree. I, I'm, I definitely want to hear his drumming. I mean, the the most the only things I ever heard from him were from low quality YouTube videos, and that's certainly never a fair way to uh, to, to judge an artist. I want to, you know, see maybe see him live or maybe hear him on the album. I'm sure since he comes from a more metal background, he's gonna give some more oomph, some extra kick, and I, I'm hoping for some blast beats. You know, uh, Lordy fans are saying, "Oh no, blast beats!" But I think, hell yeah. <laughs> That, that that's that's metal. That that's freaking rock and roll. I, I'm not saying do death metal style. You know, but most people associate blast beats with death metal. But you know, a bit of double bass drum. It, it sounds awesome. You know, I'm game for that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the thing that I'm most looking forward to on the new album, Otis, because uh, like like Cecily said, Kita's not a bad drummer at all. But uh, Otis seems to be a lot more technical, and he's put a lot of different kind of drum fills on the old songs and. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Lordy said that at Otis coming in the band is sort of like when uh, Peter Chris left Kiss and Eric Carr came in. It's a different kind of entity. It's a completely Kiss different and- different style. You know, Kiss's first drummer almost had a blues blues kind of rhythm and blues feel to him. You know, the new drummer was much more rock and roll oriented. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm hoping for. That Mr. Lordy said that uh, also compared it to Judas Priest with Painkiller, how the drums on that were amazing, and said that it's time for Lordy to do their Painkiller. Oh. I sincerely hope that, that Mr. Lordy is not just saying that. I sincerely hope that that's fucking true. And like you said, I'd like to hear a, a little more of the double bass drums, not anything like full blast beats and like death metal or something like that, but no, a good band to point to is Udo, where exactly. there are double bass drums, but it it's a very similar band, like, Lord, it's a way to get more balls and sound a little heavier. I mean, if, if anyone wa- I mean, you know, UDO never went a full, kind of full-fledged death metal, but when you listen to them, they sound lean, they sound sharp, and they sound nasty. If anyone wants an example of, you know, incredible drumming, just listen to the album Time Bomb. Songs like, you know, Time Bomb, Metal Eater, uh, Metal Maniac, Ma- Ma- uh, Mastermind, incredible songs, all incredible drumming. That seriously just Can't kick argue freaking with that. ass. Kick freaking yeah, ass. Um, and uh, the costumes as well, because Otis was uh, one month planning of costumes. Yeah, uh, I. To this day, I don't know what he is. Um, and again, this is a complaint towards the costume and character, not toward the person. But I don't like the costume. I think it was just thrown together at the last minute. Again, understandably, because. They had a month to tour, but what I think they could have done, and I, I've said this a, a couple of times before, is that during the tour they could have had a drummer, m- maybe an actual new member, and just have him in a hood or something, you know, it's like with like a large cloak, you know, conceal him from the audience, make him like a mysterious figure, and tell him it's some kind of, you know, amazing new mystic you know, drama or something that they captured, and that, that that very soon he's gonna go through a monsterization process, and then after the tour or something, after you've had time to plan out a character, reveal him to the fans as you know, the full effects of our tour managed to warp his mind, and he's finally come out of his human skin, and he's become a monster. That would have been clever because everybody would have been thinking, okay, who's this guy? You know, and then we could see a really cool monster design. Instead, we're stuck with the Raisin Brand Man because that's what he looks like. He looks like the Raisin Brand Man. I don't think anyone knows what he is at this point. Mr. Lordy doesn't know what he is, but I, I, I don't, I never 
had any problem with Odysseus' character or the look. I, th I mean, I thought it was a very interesting in creation, and I just thought that, okay, this is the first incarnation. We are going to see Otis sort of like the real character come out with the next album. The only thing that bothered me was the fact that I thought that, okay, this costume looks cool, but the fact was that ba the Babes era is a very you know, colorful 80s tribute thing, and here comes Otis with, like, no color on him, studs, leather. He looked like a fucking metal monster instead of the... Uh, unlike the other members and I thought that he looked, looked like, like some ideas from Dedic were thrown together essentially he looked like he belonged more in Dedic and the Monsterican era than he did in Babes yeah exactly that's exactly my first thought was okay this costume is cool but this monster is from Dedic this is not a Babes for breakfast drummer what the hell is this so like he's from a completely different era so I'm sort of like hope, waiting for when Otis finally sort of like gets fully inducted into the band by becoming his own character with all the others at the same time and also getting his drum work on an album. Yeah, and um, the thing that actually saved his costume was the pink lights in the background because that, that it kind of looked like it was pink. So I think uh, that's the only reason he actually fed into the band at that time and, oh god, oh god this pink light lights need to go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you look at Otis's prom promo pictures, they're really goddamn dark. Yeah, they are. And, and then you have the pink lighting, which kind of undermines him. And like I said, he looks like a raisin then. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at the raisin bran guy, you know? It's like... Uh... <laughs> yeah, but... but I think, you know, like, character, like, I think he's too little original. It looks like everyday monsters, and it, it isn't something special yet. Well, yeah, but I I still think that Otis, even getting the costume and everything like the Babes tour, okay, it was nothing compared to something like Dead Egg or something like that. I will be the first to admit that, but uh, I, I mean, like I've said time and time again, I still think that Lordy did a great job with even having a tour at the end of that. When you have a month to, okay, drummer left, we have to get a new drummer, or then train just to rehearse all the songs with him, then come up with a character, make the costume. I mean, I just, I can't imagine what pressure Mr. Lordy was under during that month. Because it was either get a new drummer or cancel the tour, and when you have to cancel a full European tour. But again, I've had my criticisms on the tour and how certain countries were very rudely avoided. I won't get into that because that's been in the past. <laughs> It's been it's been said, and I don't want to you know beat up the proverbial dead horse because the horse isn't dead at this point. It's rotting. It's a disheveled carcass of a you know flea infested horse. I'm not even gonna beat the proverbial dead horse. What I am looking forward to is a darker album. I'm because again the pattern. You have a light album, a dark album, a light album, a dark album, a light album. Clearly, I think we're gonna get a dark album, and I think those are the the one the albums that Lordy really shined on, because they're able to kind of they they still retain a certain tug and cheek element, but it's not so over the top and forced, almost guarish like, and they're able to tie uh, tap into some real horror, some real terror, and a really much heavier, edgier sound. I think that's what makes the Monster Can Dream the most. Um, the, the, their best album for me because they didn't you know mess around they had keyboards but they pulled them in appropriately they let the guitar shine in have this nasty little evil crunch to it and the mixing was like I said like for a metal band and it came out nasty dark and heavy